Eiji Sawamura is a Japanese baseball legend. Born in 1917 in May Prefecture, he was a young stud. In 1934, Sawamura participated in the National High School Baseball Championship for Kyoto Commercial High School and struck out 23 batters in one game. After the tournament, he dropped out of high school following an altercation with a teammate and participated for the All Japan team in an exhibition series sponsored by the Yomiuri newspaper against a team of major leaguers. The 17-year-old Sawamura wowed the competition, striking out 9 hitters and surrendering just one run through 5 innings. Now, initially one may question the achievement. Maybe MLB didn't send their best hitters, or maybe they weren't even trying. Well, you can make that call for yourself, because this MLB team included 4 Hall of Famers in Babe Ruth, Jimmy Fox, Charlie Gehringer, and Lou Gehrig. Although Ruth did say that he struggled to hit because of the glare of the sunlight in the batter's box, he still praised Sawamura's performance, and manager Connie Mack even offered to sign Sawamura to a major league contract, but he declined because he didn't want to leave home. Despite Sawamura's best efforts, a solo shot by Gehrig in the seventh inning proved to be the only run in the game as Sawamura was saddled with the loss. And he struggled for the rest of the exhibition showcase, going 0-3 with an ERA over 10 in the next three outings. Even if you include the marvelous first game, his ERA was 7.85 over 28.2 frames. With this in mind, one may argue that the first outing was merely a fluke. But consider this, Sawamura was just 17 years old at the time and the Japanese All-Stars went 0-16 against the Major Leaguers, so this was clearly a lopsided matchup to begin with. So even managing to put up one outing of such class was very impressive. Two years later, Sawamura joined the Tokyo Giants of the Japanese Baseball League, now known as the Yomiuri Giants. At the time, the baseball season was separated into spring and fall halves. Sawamura debuted in the spring and pitched in four games, but his real contribution came in the fall as he threw the first no-hitter in Japanese baseball history on September 25th, as he went 13-2 with 112 strikeouts and a 1.05 ERA in 120 and a third frames. Keep in mind the run scoring environment in 1936 was incredibly low, but the weighted statistics still back him up, with an ERA minus of 37, a FIT minus of 70, and doubling the league strikeout rate. Overall, Sawamura went 14-3 with a 1.18 ERA in his 19-year-old rookie campaign. But this was merely a preview of what Sawamura was truly capable of, as he went on to win the Triple Crown and League MVP in the spring of 1937, going 24-4 with an 0.81 ERA in 244 innings with 196 strikeouts, 24 complete games, 7 shutouts, and another no-hitter on May 1st. That's an ERA minus of 29. Combined with his fall numbers, he finished the year at 33-10 with a 1.38 ERA and 325 punchouts across 384 frames, good for 13.1 wins above replacement. However, Japan was entering one of its darkest periods in history and the Second World War was looming over Asia. Sawamura was conscripted into the Imperial Army and served for two years in the Sino-Japanese War before being dispatched in 1940. During the war, he injured his right shoulder due to the constant flow of throwing grenades, and he was infected with malaria after a bullet wound to his left hand. Upon his return to the baseball diamond, Sawamura was unable to throw overhand anymore due to the stress on his arm, and he converted to a sidearm motion. Although he was a shell of his former self, he still managed to post a 2.24 ERA between 1940 and 41, and threw yet another no-hitter on July 6, 1940. He was deployed back into battle in 1942, and that effectively marked the end of his playing career, as his arm was so damaged that he couldn't even throw a sidearm anymore, resorting to a submarine throw when he returned in 1943. He threw just 11 innings and surrendered 13 earned runs that year, and made his final appearance on October 24. As he was let go by the Giants in 1944 and retired at just 27 years old, finishing his career with a 63 22 record, a 1.74 ERA, 554 strikeouts, 20 shutouts, 3 no hitters, an MVP award, and 20.1 war across 105 games. His number 14 was retired by the Giants soon after. Sawamura was deployed back into battle after retirement and on December 2, 1944, was killed off Yakushima Island when his ship was torpedoed by the U.S. Navy. 
While his body was not recovered, his spirit was enshrined at Yasukuni Shrine in his hometown of Mei Prefecture. In many ways, this is an extremely unfortunate and grave disservice to his legacy and an insult to his character to be buried alongside war criminals at such a controversial site that cannot be honored. Now, the thumbnail of this video claims that Sabamura is Japan's Cy Young. But one may ask, how can Sabamura be the Cy Young of Japan if he only won 63 games? After all, Cy Young won over 500. Well, that would be because the Pitcher of the Year award in Japan was named after Sawamura in 1947 by the NetQ magazine. So the two men are both etched in history as their legacies are passed on every season through the award. Well, actually not quite every season because the criteria for the Sawamura award is very strict and traditional, so there have been years where nobody wins the award, but that's a topic for another day. In 1959, Sawamura was inducted into the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame becoming one of the first players ever inducted. In 2017, the Giants and Fighters played an exhibition series in honor of the 100th anniversary of Sawamura's birth. So, although the baseball career of A.G. Sawamura was short-lived due to unfortunate events off the field, there is no question that his story is straight out of folklore, and he will forever be remembered in Japan as one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB content in English.